Hello, everybody. And this is Stacy from The Advisor. And today I'm so excited because we have a very special guest. It's Andy from Andy's Way. And Andy is a part of our podcast community. He has his own podcast on The Advisor. So check out his podcast and all the podcasts he's done previously. He, he really tackles a lot of important issues that could really help you grow as a person. So check out his, his other podcast. And today he's going to talk about something that's amazing. And it's the power of change. And this is something that a lot of, we all need to work on change. We, every day, you, you know, working on change can improve our lives dramatically. And, you know, he, he's going to tell you a little about what he does and, and he's going to go into the power of change and you're going to hear some amazing advice and tools and strategies to help you grow as a person and be the person you want to be. And especially be happy because that's what the goal is in life. We want to be happy individuals, productive individuals, and we just want to live life to the fullest. And Andy's here to show you how. So Andy, take it away. Tell everybody a little about yourself, you know, what Andy's way is, and and let's get into that power of change because I'm excited. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, Stacey. It's a, an honor and a pleasure to be here. Um, you know, Andy's way is really always adventure. It's a play on my name. Uh, my name is A.L. Way. So always adventure is my company. The website's always adventure life. And and that's really how I approach change and, and everyday life. So uh, excited to engage in the conversation. We've always had a great time uh, in, in all of our conversations. So happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. Now, you know, change is so important and there's so many different aspects of change. And I know you have certain things you want to really tackle today. And so like, let's go into change. Like, you know, what in your, in your mind, you know, you know, are the important things that we really have to focus on when you, when change comes to mind, what's the first thing in your mind that hits you that really you feel that is necessary to talk about? I think that uh, a couple of things, it's a rapidly changing world that we're living in. One of the first things that comes to mind is technology and the impact on our culture. Yes. Um, another thing is that nobody necessarily uh, along the way, as we're growing up, moving through life, it's not talked about as something that um, it's not a tool of, a, of adversity for us to use. We're not talking about our discipline. We're not talking about um, mental strength or fortitude or values. Change is not something really kind of acknowledged as something that we're going to face as, yes. um, and, and we're not given necessarily the tools to, and, and how to overcome change and how to adjust. And so uh, those two things, I think alone are top of mind for me. Yeah, you know, I, I feel like there are so many things that you you, you read in the, on the internet and it talks about this and it talks about that. But one thing I, I see a lack of is people don't really talk about how, you know, the, the steps the, the you know, of change, you know, because change is very hard for a lot of people. It's, you know, um, we get set in our ways like we were talking about, or they fear change, you know, because what's going to happen if I change? Will I like myself, you know, and, and you know, what's going to, what's going to happen, you know, along the way? Am I going to meet my demons? Am I, you know, what's going, going to happen, you know? And a lot of people will, you know, like they like to stay in their little cocoon and, and they don't want to get out of that cocoon. But, you know, change is, is necessary. We are a changing world and it, there's no way really of avoiding it. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that comes to mind right away immediately is that change does not mean that we lose ourselves. Right. I am a creature of habit. I, re I relate to this intimately. I, I am yeah. definitely a creature of habit. Um, but change has been very present in my life along the way, uh, multiple times over the years, not little changes, big yeah. changes I was kind of forced into. Right. And so I was kind of forced into how to manage that and how to respond to that change. And um, so that's been a, an ongoing kind of piece of my life growing up and, and ongoing. And now I've learned how to kind of embrace that and use it as a tool. And so uh, Change does not mean that you become something different. Uh, right. You can actually use it as a tool to become more of what you really care about and who you feel you really are. Right. And I think one of the biggest things, too, is that people, in order to change, people have to really realize who they are as a person. You know, they have to understand themselves, you know, and then, you know, that could be challenging in itself, you know, and uh and then really look at themselves honestly, you know, and see, you know, 
what about myself do I need to change to make myself a better person? The one biggest thing is that we hate to admit our flaws, you know, and so many people stay in denial because, you know, we all, we all make mistakes in life. We all, you know, you, you know, um, have made bad choices, but, you know, and we all may have characteristics that we really need to work on, but, you know, change is such an important factor of everybody's lives. It can, it can help you enhance in so many ways, mentally, physically, spiritually in your workforce, you know, it's just, it's, it's a necessary tool. And like you said, things are constantly changing and ever so, you know, lately we we've made a huge jump in technology. We've went from one extremity to the next. And it's like, you know, if you don't keep up with the times and you don't work on change, you know, you, you fall back. And then that's when you kind of get stuck. And then that, and I think a negative emotions start kind of play into it too. For sure. You know, before we started recording, we talked, we touched on reacting versus responding, right? And sometimes yeah. we can flip into uh, allowing ourselves to uh, be positioned where we kind of re react to life versus yeah. maintaining a posture of being able to respond to changes as they occur, which is very different. Yes. And uh, with this rapidly changing world, I think one of the things I wanted to touch on today in our conversation is that life is changing faster than ever. The impact of technology, not only on our everyday life and our personal lives, but also on the our workplace, right? Yes. If we think back to just as recently as COVID, Zoom yeah. meetings and, and virtual meetings and working virtually from home. And what does yeah. that look like in our home space where we're supposed to feel the most comfortable and the most safe, um, it begins It begins to kind of all get blurred and and it's an entirely new experience. So how do we respond to that? I know that my home office is open. Yeah. And during that time, my wife was working from home and she had another one of the bedrooms which became her office. And <laughs> when she was done with the meeting, right, that door was closed. She was working from home and then she would open the door and she would be done with her work. Yeah. But I'm over here in an open office in the front of the house and the kitchen's right over here and uh -huh. right hands, she's making lunch, she's sawing on something, it's loud. <laughs> I get distracted, you know, I'm like, honey, you know, like, I, I'm totally <laughs> right now. You're, you're killing me over here. You know, uh -huh. it became kind of a thing. Like, I can't wait for you to go to back, back to the office. And, you yeah. know, we're, of course, we're not alone in that experience, but how do we, you know, how, are we capable of that kind of cognitive and behavioral flexibility? And one of the questions that I've started to ask is how do we cultivate greater cognitive and behavioral flexibility so that we can better adjust to this rapidly changing world? So I think we're all having that experience. Yeah, and I think that's a great, a great um, question. How do we change, you know, in this rapidly changing world, you know, and so many people are afraid of change. So many people just don't know where to go next. You know, you have all these things that are coming out, you know, AI has been here since I think the 1970s, but now they're using it not just for the military, they're using it for everything, you know. And, you know, and people are just starting to understand it and learn it. Some people are abusing it, but, you know, it's just, you have to really learn how to like, you know, change, like, you know, people are communicating differently. We have a new generation that thinks and reacts to things differently. So you really, in order to have that, that balance and, and to have positive change, you really have to take, you know, a bunch of different generations, a bunch of ways that we were all taught differently and somehow come to that, like you were saying, that compromise, that middle, you know, that we lack in a lot of things, you know. It's a pretty polarizing world that we live in, but I don't know that that's proving to be the best approach, right? Right, um, exactly. Yeah, and, and while that may be the tendency, we don't have to just surrender to that. Uh, we do have power of choice and freedom uh, to control our experience in, in many ways. And so... I think one of the things that we can do, I know this, when we cultivate a deeper level of trust in yes. ourselves, yes. we're better able to trust in others and yes. in the experience that we're having in the world around us. Yes. And so there is a way you know, to cultivate that. And one, one thing that we can do uh, that I talk about a lot is just practicing getting uncomfortable in little ways. Like we can yeah. do little things that make little adjustments that are 
we can that are pal you know we are palatable we can take them on and they're right. they're not into the, the world they're little ships and, yes. and those are less risky but they still help to move the needle in our ability to trust in ourselves that we'll be okay and yes. once we again cultivate that deeper level of trust in ourselves we're we're more willing to trust in others and and that kind of helps to lower that guard and trust in open op more open lines of communication and relationship. Um, there, there's a whole uh, body of work there that I'm pretty immersed in. And, uh, and I know that it works. I've seen it in action. But cultivating greater levels of trust in ourselves is one of the, uh, the strongest tools that I know of in mm -hmm. helping to break down or, or kind of soften the impact of these big these big shifts are kind of being oppressed upon us uh, yeah. as we move through this kind of technology uh, innovation era. Now, what are some of the the tools and the strategies for for you know developing a a deeper level of trust? Because you know that's something a lot of people struggle with. You know, and there, and there was a point in my life too that I struggled with it, and sometimes I do struggle with it because sometimes things could just set you off. And you know what? That confidence level could drop for a little bit, but then you have to you have to reapply the steps and and the tools we've learned to get back to that that level where you're you have that deep trust in you. Because if you don't, it it will it will hold you back from reaching the goals and the and the aspirations and everything that you want to accomplish. It's a lot, right? The 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 importance of um and i don't think i ever was really present to the importance of trusting myself yeah it's an interesting question right how yeah. much do you trust yourself right right how much do i trust that i'll be okay no matter what you know right. the, the other implication is fear yes right how do we surrender our power to fear how often are we operating out of fear, worry, doubt, concern? If we're living out of a place of like a primal state of being, fear, yes. worry, doubt, right? And you live out of fear and that's what drives your actions. Yeah. That's going to, you're going to have a different experience of life. And it's going to be one that I would say is not going to be, you're not going to be necessarily happy with because you're operating out of a constant state of fear. How can yeah. you be fully happy and fulfilled and excited about life if you're constantly operating out of a, pa a place of fear, worry, concern, and doubt? Exactly. I'm not saying that having a healthy dose of consideration, right? Mm -hmm. uh, prepare for the worst, hope for the best. Definitely mm -hmm. a mantra my father has impressed upon me. Um, yeah. I am absolutely uh, familiar uh, with change and mm -hmm. uh, having to adjust to these big shifts in life. I, I remember I grew up on an island of, uh, in Savannah, Georgia, but a small island in Savannah, had a tight-knit community, um, really had a, a fortunate upbringing, but then was he left home, unfortunately, in the middle of my senior year in high school. January 7th in 1994, the middle of my senior year in high school, completely wow. uprooted, moved all the way across the country, and landed and finished high school in a whole new city with knowing no one at all. Right, right. right? So all of my friends, family, et cetera, everything that was familiar, the ocean. I grew up kind of like Huck Finn with a motor in the intercoastal yeah. waterway. That was all gone. I moved to a desert in Tucson, Arizona. So it was <laughs> a huge shift, right? And a then huge... you know, later joined the Navy and went through a boot camp in Chicago and a school in Pensacola only to then serve out of Japan, right. was four deployed out of Japan, eight months out of the year, massive shift. Yes. Right. Humongous. Yeah. These are, these are big, big shifts and it took a, it took a lot. And I think that some of what those, just those two examples have taught me is that I'll be okay. Right. right. That in me is the ability to make a shift, be okay where I'm planted and, and because I, I could trust myself and trust that I would be okay, I was always had that to lean on. And I think that's a, a powerful tool to be aware of. Yes, I agree with you. Like I've even noticed, like even my, even in the toughest times of my life, I always got through it. And the it, while you're in the in the moment, it may be traumatic for you. It may be overwhelming. 
Sure. But if you think about it, we've gotten, always gotten through it, you know, and we've moved on, you know, it's just when we're at the moment, you know, being able to adjust to that change, being able to, you know, reset your mindset, you know, so you can change in a productive manner, you know, and because that's when the test is, is when it's happening, you know, all right, how am I going to approach this, you know, and not let it get the best of me? I would say, and and I'll, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Do you feel like you grew in a positive and healthy way out of the difficult challenges that you went through in your upbringing or at some point in your life? Oh, definitely. I think that I became stronger as a person. I started to see people in a different set of eyes. I had more empathy, more love towards other people. My level of kindness increased. I was able to really, um, you know, if I fell back, I fell on the floor, I was able to get myself back up. You know, I, I struggled maybe, but I was still able to do it. And I realized from all the events that happened in my life, each and every time that I went through it, no matter how hard it was emotionally or physically, I got myself through it and I'll get myself through it again. And I just had to keep telling myself and just taking time out to, to meditate, to clear that mindset, to cle really can't get myself to that level of calmness where I could think clear. And, and, but I definitely think it made me a better person and it put me on a journey that I did not even think I was going to be on. And I think so, sometimes I think we go through these things in life for a reason. You know, we may not understand why at the time, but I think everything that happens to us, it happens for a reason, because at the time it may not have been the greatest thing, but in, at the end, it, it made me better in many ways. I couldn't love that answer more. It's so true. It, you have the, you, you're right there with it, with this answer. Uh, that's so great. And it's true, right? I think we all breakdowns and breakthroughs. And I'm not saying that uh, every, all of our, you know, the listeners should here should be you know, uh, throwing themselves into this massive tumultuous shift uh, with yeah. and, and, and so forth. Uh, but I am saying that um, look for the opportunity and the challenges. Look for yeah. the opportunity in contrast. Yeah. Um, I, when I talk about contrast, like I used to can't, I couldn't stand traffic and yeah. I'd get agitated and frustrated. And, and I'm not saying I would go. <laughs> I think uh, every man uh, thinks that. Like I don't have anything. <laughs> drive on the road <laughs> yeah but I would be frustrated and I had a whole narrative around why I how did I wind up here in this traffic when I work from home and have freedom of time um mm -hmm. but it became a tool that where I could practice patience and so I think that there's something to right I really relate uh, adventure motorcycle riding helped me to heal through a different difficult time as a father yeah. and that, that's a lot of my methodology and my mindset, that's where my book came from, is my relationship to adventure really to help me to heal. Yeah. And I, I derived uh, a lot of value from intentionally engaging in some challenging scenarios. Right. Um, so they don't have to be huge scenarios, but they can be simple. Yes. Right. They can have a mitigated level of risk. Right. And when we do that, again, we kind of go back to man, there's a lot of opportunity to just cultivate a deeper level of trust in ourselves and others and we'll be okay. And that helps us to kind of embrace change uh, yeah. in a new light and in a new way, knowing that we'll be okay. And there's something to be excited about on the other side right. of, that kind of, of that challenge. And, and I think that's what's worthwhile. And that's what we should kind of keep our sights on and do it intentionally because it's readily right. available. And I, I love the idea that, you know, when you went motorcycle riding or you went on a journey, you know, it took you to a whole different level, you know, where you just saw life from a whole different aspect. And it, it brought you to that level of calmness and, and joy and, and freedom and, you know, it, it, to, it's things that you couldn't receive when you're in that car, in that traffic, you know, you know, it just it just took you out of all that and it brought you to a, a happier, you know, level of life. Well, a hundred percent. And again, I, I wouldn't assert that everybody should ride a motorcycle. It's incredibly <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> but it, it did. It did do something for me. It did play a role for me. I um, mean, it kind of connected me 
Uh, I had never heard of adventure motorcycle riding. I'm, 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 I have a pretty high self-preservation reflex. Uh, yeah. I really don't want to do anything overly uh, crazy, although I do like to, you know, yeah. stretch mm -hmm. a little bit intentionally. I, yeah, um, yeah. But there's no doubt that uh, when I discovered adventure motorcycle riding, and by definition, you know, an adventure is getting uncomfortable and exploring the unknown and seeking excitement. And I spent a number of years really unpacking what that really meant to me, uh, yeah. because I did notice that uh, as I, I, I did purchase an adventure motorcycle, it's kind of a big street legal dirt bike and go on some journeys. Um, I did notice that it helped me to heal and grow stronger uh, for the road ahead as a father. And so I was like, well, what's in this that's um, that matters to others and why is it important? So uh, there's some there's something there, and it's really what I'm I'm passionate about. I think when you when you bring joy to your life, no matter what it is, I think it changes you. It just it 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 takes you out of that space, and it puts you in a different different you know a different light, and and it could take you know it could actually reset you you know, and uh, it definitely can reset you. I think. It, yeah, there's no doubt. Um, in ways that we wouldn't otherwise suspect. And I think that's the beauty. Yeah. Um, when we give life, when we give people mm -hmm. the space and, per, and the permission to surprise us in ways yeah. that we didn't suspect, right? Yeah. So um, when we kind of explore the unknown and we create inside of us and outside of us, we, we kind of hold the space for something that we didn't expect to show up. Yeah. And then it's, there's a level of curiosity in it. Um, and there's beauty in that space where the universe, uh, where God um, gets to show up in a yeah. beautiful way. Uh, oh, because yeah. there's no doubt, I don't care who you are, there's no doubt that life has not always turned out the way that we thought it would. Right. right. So there's no level of managing life and it's going to show up exactly as you constructed it and manufactured it and engineered it. Like, it's just not how life works. Right. So when we allow for a margin of unknown yeah. and we hold the space for that and we're kind right. of curious and getting kind of excited about what, what's going to show up. Yeah. Man, and that's where, where really a lot of the beauty is. Uh, that's yeah. where the beauty of others Right. Where we give pause and allow space for people that may not look like us or have the same faith as us or have a different political, religious view, whatever. Uh, when we actually get to know the human. Yes. And we're just operating out of just curiosity and love. And we yes. and we'll engage in an uncomfortable conversation and let people show up. Um, that can be really fun. Oh, yeah. Experiences that we would not otherwise do, but we do them and. And they're like, wow, that was way more fun than I anticipated. Or right. you derive various values and uh, rewards from uh, various things like that, that I think is really the, the sweet stuff of life. Yeah. You know, you said something really important, you know, not judging someone for their political opinion or their religious, you know, beliefs and just looking at the person. And just, just, you know, just, just get, you know, developing that bond with that person, according to that person, who they are as a human being, you know, let's take all those labels and everything else away. And then let's just look at them as a human being, you know, and take all that earthly, you know, crap that we've been, you know, given and just, just look at them as a human, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, what their beliefs are, you know, it matters who they are as a person. And I think we've over the over time we've we've lost a lot of that. You see people judging people for you know who they believe in, who they you know who they who they vote for, and all this other sh you know crap. And it's really all, all about you know look at the person, look at you know who they are, what kind of heart they have, you know you know the the kindness in that person, maybe the funny stories. They have a good sense of humor, you know, and just enjoying to get to know that person as a human being and not judge them because they're not like you or the way you think they should be. A hundred percent. I feel like you and I could have this conversation all day long. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> and we and we have. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but that's right. I mean, it's so quick, so quick to you know cut the tie or to shut it down or too quick to not engage to make the yeah. decision not to engage versus you know maybe we maybe we make a little bit of a shift a two millimeter distinction where we're more willing to embrace getting a little uncomfortable out of curiosity of what if yeah how can i and what if are, are two beautiful questions that right. i carry with me on a regular basis i was talking about it earlier uh before this show here and um i think they're they're critical what if and how can i yeah versus why not and this is why it's not going to happen and this is why it's not going to work and this is how it's going to go and i got it all figured out no <laughs> one can predict the future the, nope. no one Nobody. it's never been done and i know there's some uh, people back in history with you know so and so predicted this occurrence but generally speaking across the history of time no one yeah. can predict the future no. and and I think that there's a, a beauty that we rob ourselves of when we maintain status quo, we maintain the same routines and we shut down opportunities and possibilities to uh, engage in amazing conversations and connect with other people. Invariably, we share yes. something in common with everyone. Yes, we uh, do. If we're willing to get to the point in the conversation to understand that and connect with people in that way. And, it's just so worth it. It's just oh. so beautiful to connect with people where you go, oh, it might have taken half an hour of conversation. And then you realize, oh, my God. Yeah. I didn't know we went to the same high school. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know, Satterfield you know, or whatever. Right. Like, <laughs> you know, there's, there's always a, a shared occurrence in some way, form or fashion or something that you can empathize and and, and really um you hear something that you would have never known about somebody and, and it really connects and registers with you in a powerful way. So getting uncomfortable and, and, and allowing some space and exploring the unknown, again, kind of going back to that relationship adventure of adventure uh, really helps to uh, provide some of those opportunities for more meaningful connections and more rewarding connections yeah. and conversations. You know, even I, I went, I went away for a while and I was just in an area that I haven't been to in a long time and just going away and I was by the water and it was just a, la a relaxing atmosphere. I just, it just brought back, it just changed me. Then I came home and my, my, my head started hurting. It was like, you know, it was like you come back to the world and all oh, the reason the responsibility, I'm like, oh, I got a headache. I don't know why, you know, and then you, you're in a, in a relaxing or adventurous setting and you're just enjoying it. You're, you're soaking it up, you know, and then you come home to life and then you start worrying about everything that, you know, your life you know, surround you by. And it's the question is, is, you know, how do we change that? You know, how do we not let, you know, our life and our responsibilities get the best of us? How do we just enjoy life and just enjoy ourselves and enjoy our family and just live that life of gratitude and not so much have to worry? And as we change, because we are a change in society, make positive changes and better ourselves and better, you know, be mentors, you know, because we were talking about, you know, being a boss or being a mentor, you know, when we talked about business early on before we came on the show, you know, but we all could be mentors. Is it you don't even have to be in a business. Let's be a mentor, you know, and and you know, just work with positive change. If we could feed off each other's positive changes in life, it the you know the world would be such a better place. You know, you, you touched on a key point, gratitude. You know, I created a practice and it's a practice. I'm not always great at it. Sometimes I'm I'm out of practice and then I'm, I can feel it and tell and, and I got to get back into practice. Uh, but it's the practice of gratitude. Yeah. Right? Uh, the impact of the practice of gratitude is positivity. And in this social narrative that can be so negative and yeah. heavy and pessimistic. Yeah, couldn't we all use a little bit more positivity? I mean, this yeah. is old ancient wisdom, the value and modern wisdom, the value of yeah. gratitude, like taking the time 
I call it bookending my days in the morning and at night. Doesn't take a lot of time, but just being present to the fact that I can see. I'm looking at a camera right now, but when I take my eyes a little bit over here, I can see you on that camera, right? Mm -hmm. I can see, I can, you know, I can feel, I can hear, I can smell, I can taste, right? Like my legs work and I don't have to tell them to. All of these things, these simple things, I can just be present to being grateful for. Yeah. And uh, that really helps just our, our well-being in general. In, a, in this kind of, again, this social narrative that can be so heavy and pessimistic and, and negative, taking the time to spend some time to invest in connecting with what we're grateful for. Um, I have a car. I have a cool home in a hot summer. Right, that kind of, It's simple. That really kind of changes the posture of our heart and has a positive difference in our, our well-being ongoing. And it may sound kind of a wooey or whatever, but it's, it's important and it makes a difference. And so you can choose not to do that or choose to do that. But I promise to be practice spending yeah. a little bit of time in gratitude. It makes a world of difference. And then second point that just came up for me was our values. Mm -hmm. When I think that one of the big things I'm present to right now, uh, both in the workforce and everyday life in our per personal lives is change fatigue. Yeah. Right? This rapidly changing world, people are being asked to adjust constantly to how yeah. things function, either, either all the way down to what kind of connector goes in my phone. Oh, it's a C connector. Oh, it's a lightning connector. Good Lord, I don't even know what platform to go on to watch my favorite TV show. You don't just turn your TV on anymore. Right. Oh, I gotta go to Hulu or Netflix or what? Oh, that's on Prime. Man, I'm worn out just trying to, you know, watch a TV show. And yeah. I think that one of the things when we are being tasked by the world we live in to change constantly, kind of adjust and, and pivot, yeah. uh, there's a lot of inconsistencies. That's why people, I think, really like their routines. Yeah. Bit, is knowing what your values are. Right. Right? Like, if you know what you value and you know what you really care about, and you have a kind of a vision of what you're really working towards, then yeah. you know what to say no to. Yes. And I think that's critically important. Oh, yeah. You got to know what to say no to so that you're not saying yes to everything. Right. Exactly. You know, and, and that really eliminates a lot of pressure when you're, no, uh, that's just not what I'm up to right now, which is right. a beautiful question. What are you up to right now? Yeah. You got to know what that is. Right. You definitely do. You know, you should always, you know, I think journaling is great. And I think, you know, setting goals and setting short term goals, long term goals where, you know, you know, and and a, a page of what are you up to now would be a really good page to, to, you know, like, what am I capable of doing right now at this, you know, very time, you know, and then realizing where your limits are. If we can understand our limitations in life then we know where, how far we can push ourselves and how far we can't push ourselves. Because one thing people hate is limitations, but we all have to have limitations in life in order to be successful and in order to live a healthy, happy life. We need limitations. You know, when I hear you say limitations, I think of uh, healthy boundaries. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, and, and knowing what those boundaries are. Yeah. It's okay to say no. It's really healthy to say no. Yes, so it learn is. Learn how to practice you know, saying no, because maintaining healthy boundaries is incredibly value, uh, valuable. Yeah. And um, again, back to the culture and change in this rapidly changing world. Here, we're yeah. talking about some really critical things that really help, that really help us maintain a, a little bit more capacity right? Yeah. Where we don't feel like we're operating at 7,000 RPMs, right? Or we're, we can kind of dial it down, build in some bandwidth, and, yeah. and we're not just feeling so stressed and pressured, right? So healthy yeah. boundaries, say no to some things that don't serve you well. You don't have to react to every demand uh, and, and every sense of pressure point. Um, and everybody, right? Yeah. Like some people you may need to say no to. And I know you may love them, <laughs> and they may be old friends or whatever it may be but you know be careful about uh, the healthy boundaries that um you know what you're saying yes to 
and uh, and maintain some some healthy boundaries is certainly something that has been incredibly valuable valuable for me. And I've noticed a significant shift in my friend groups and who uh, and and how I spend my time. It's been a beautiful because that I, I wasn't always like that um, maintaining healthy boundaries. Yeah, no, I wasn't either. And I didn't really like it in the beginning. You know, I was really uncomfortable with sudden limitations because I kind of was that free spirit girl, you know, and, you know, I knew that I, you know, had to live a certain way in order to be healthy and to be happy. And I had to really change a lot of things in my life. And that that had I needed to put healthy boundaries in my life. And I'll tell you, it was hard because when you just want to be a free spirited person and just wing it and just, you know, live life to the fullest, you know, it doesn't always work that way. It's not always good for you, you know, and uh, it, it's hard, it's hard to, to do that. But in the long run, it's probably one of the best things you can do. And to the fact that you said, you know, it's okay to say no, that's one of the hardest things people have you know, to do is so many people pleasers out there that are afraid to say no, but it's good to say no, because, you know, sometimes that it could really run you over the barrel, you know, and people also take advantage of those type of people because their, their kindness is so overbearing that people actually take advantage when they know, oh, that person will say yes, I'll get that person to do that, you know. Goes back into trust, right? Yep. Goes back We're into touching trust. On trust getting uncomfortable, positivity, anchoring in what we're grateful for. I mean, yeah, I wrestled with all of these things. Yeah. Um, and, and found a lot of, you know, I found value through living adventurously, right? Through, through adventure um, yeah. and, and through kind of a, figuring out why that helped me to heal for, you know, for the road ahead. And what was that? And um, there's no doubt there's a, so much commonality between the culture that we're living in and and this a rapidly changing technology uh, focused era and um, the impact all of that is happening on, having on our everyday lives and um you know again kind of going back to you know, how do we adjust and and how do i uh, not just uh, surrender all of my power to just uh, everything that's coming at me um, yeah. next thing you know you're just uh you're, you're trying to dig out of a hole that that shovel in your hand won't won't it won't, won't, won't be able to do um yeah. won't be able to keep up with right exactly exactly and sometimes you know running around trying to do everything for everybody the, the last person you, you think of is yourself and those are the people who get the most worn out and you know they just you know it's uh you can't you can't help others unless you help yourself first it's a stereotypical kind of cliche with the airlines, right? But it's yeah. true. Right. Whether we like the cliche or not, it's true. Like we, we yeah. got to take care of ourselves, uh, both as individuals, as parents, um, you know, in the workplace. You know, I know that I had a, a corporate client and they they have a, um, a series of groups and one of them are the caregivers uh, business resource group. And uh, these are people that are tasked with uh, additional tasks of, you know, caring for elderly, caring for their special needs child, caring for what have you, right? Di additional tasks. And so, um, you know, this, this company does a beautiful job of creating, and, and these are voluntary roles, this, this group that shows up to support these, is, is part of their team that are going through these additional challenges. And um, it's true, we, we got to allow ourselves to, uh, receive some help, yes. take care of ourselves so that we are the best version of ourselves, not always just reacting. Because uh, right. that's all too often, I know personally, uh, mm -hmm. I'm a very good survivor. Yeah. I survive very well. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm durable, I'm resilient, I'm tough, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Resourceful, capable, smart. But surviving is no way to move through life the next thing you know um you're later in years and you're wondering where in the world the time went and yeah. what do i do now and, right uh, and so my encouragement would be to all of us right to you me um and don't be a don't be a great survivor yeah. <laughs> figure out how to thrive and position yourself to uh really um position yourself to in, in a path uh, and mm -hmm. dare to 
uh, embark on a path and may be uncomfortable and there may be a lot of unknown, um, but one that's uh, aligned with what you really care about. And, and that may be as simple as just being willing to allow yourself to take care of you first and getting some exercise, going for a walk, saying no to something that, uh, you know, the kids or something for a moment, like, Hey, I got to go just go take a walk for a second. And exactly. you know, taking a walk is a beautiful, beautiful moment. Oh yeah. It's very therapeutic. Definitely. It's definitely therapeutic. And I, I wanted to say something when you were saying, I'm trying to think if I could remember what it was, but it was like when you were talking about thriving um, instead of surviving, you know, I know what I was going to say is, is that, you know, a lot of times when we are trying to figure out what our true purpose is, you know, and we're trying to find, you know, it's not you know, what we have right now is not fulfilling for us. And we know there, there's something else out there, but we don't know what it's OK to try things and, and have them not work out. You know, and people get really down in the dumps when it doesn't work out. It's just not the right thing. And so it's like, don't give up. Just keep trying until you find that thing that works. You know, some of the biggest entrepreneurs in the world had five, six, seven, eight failures, you know, and they just kept going and going and going until they found that one thing that worked, you know, and brought them to the point where they are today. And that's how people should really think. Don't get hard on yourself and beat yourself to the ground you know? Absolutely the truth and a, and a great point. I mean, uh, you know, w whether you're talking about entrepreneurs, and I know that people, the connotation, that story, that truth is, uh, has a stronger connotation to um, entrepreneurs, right? Where you have to try and try and try to find, and ultimately you kind of find the thing. And that's kind of the entrepreneurial story where yeah. it took a lot of effort and a lot of different tries. But I think it's also true for um, your job uh, in the corporate world. I, I'm not, my whole family's pretty uh, strongly self-employed, uh, yeah. but my wife is very corporate and her whole family is very corporate. Two different kind of ways of, of moving through life uh, professionally yeah. um, and, and both you know, personally as well. And um, that idea of being with the company for 20 years and retiring um, is really kind of not true and it never has been. Uh, statistically, yeah. it was like every seven years, people yeah. had a new job and a new house. Right. Um, that's just data, um, mm -hmm. not my opinion. And right. I think that when we give ourselves permission to draw a healthy boundary for what may not be working, it doesn't yes. mean vacate it, but maybe, maybe you kind of put your flag out there and say, I'm kind of like, you know, with your friend group and your network and you know, I wouldn't, I'm not leaving. I'm pretty happy where I am, but maybe it could be better, mm -hmm. right? Like, be curious. Maybe there's something else out there. And I think that uh, when we're open, life has a way of showing up in surprising ways. And it, um, and yeah. that's also a healthy boundary. Like this isn't working for me. And I believe that something else that's better is possible. Yeah, I agree. And that's, that's happened many times in my life. And, and, you know, and, and when it comes even to the journey of friendships, you know, um, I had a friend that said, you know, friends are not always meant to be in your life forever. They, they make their way in and they, you have, you journey with them. And sometimes you learn from each other, you grow with each other, but there are times when it gets to the point where you kind of separate you know but it's a natural thing and you just you know you keep moving on and you make new friends and develop new learn from each other and it's just it's just an ongoing journey you know you know after he's been here for a while you know he, he's just come to that conclusion of you know how how life kind of takes its toll you know it's you know you're not always meant to be with the same group of people and you're not always you know we change like we started this conversation our needs our wants you know the way we think change and we just have to go with it and just go with the times, go with what our heart says. And I, I so believe that if we listen to our heart, it will guide us in the right direction. And our true friends will be with us. Yes. Right. I, I think that's also true. Um, yes. Lord knows with the, the major shifts I've gone through in my life, um, I've, I've seen friends come and go, like you're saying. Um, and I think that sometimes I've been a great friend. I've always intended to be a great friend, but there were times where I, I look back and I'm like, I wasn't being a great friend. Right. Could have been a better friend. Um, right. I didn't know what was happening in that moment. It was a traumatic moment. It was a big shift and dang mm -hmm. it. At the same time, 
there are true friends during those periods and and in others where you know these go back 30 40 20 years where yeah. I've, I've been friends with um those people since I was a child right. uh, a young boy and and uh you know the, the navy was in 98 right so you know these are I'm really close friends with uh my navy you know, my navy buddy who was my neighbor my neighbor in a school right um, wow and he and I, I introduced him to his wife and he, he just called me a little bit ago today. Uh, mm -hmm. a really close friend of mine. And he was the only person in my wedding party that was not a relative. Um, mm -hmm. And that goes back from uh, to, to 98, right? That's about 26 years ago. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, trust, yes. allowing, right? Allow. Yes. Um, and, and staying connected to what you're grateful for and true to your values and, and, and let some things go. It's okay uh, to let some things go for sure, particularly in the, again, this rapidly changing world, which is uh, the core of the conversation. Um, you don't have to try to cling to everything that that is in your life. I think some things it's okay to let go of. You're right. Definitely. Now tell me about your book about always adventure. I know, I, you know, I don't know if everyone knows that you've written a book, but I wanted to have you like talk about it a little bit and tell everybody about your book. That's a long conversation, but I'll keep it brief. Um, uh, I don't know that everybody knows that I've written a book, but I hope that everybody does. And I'm happy to talk about it. Um, you know, the book is called Always Adventure, and it's really born out of, uh, as I've kind of alluded to and, and mentioned, um, uh, the hero's journey. You know, Joseph Campbell popularized the hero, the, the monument, the hero's journey, which most every story today and movie and 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 uh, play is based on the hero's journey. And in the part of the hero's journey, um, you know, the the participant, the subject is kind of invited into this experience. They kind of resist it. It's a challenge, um, and then they, they kind of go into this dark night of the soul. And I was a passionately committed father. I spent six years as a single father. I did remarry. And uh, my son started to struggle and, uh, when he was uh, 15. Uh, no, sorry, when he was 12, uh, going into fifth grade and um, sixth grade. And so um, we spent six years in this kind of battle. Um, I couldn't save him alone. Um, yeah. It didn't matter how much I studied and read um, and that was really a, a challenge for me. Like I couldn't save my son from the pain of his own experience and his challenges. And uh, we had to get help. And um, and that was really hard to do. And yeah. um, and it took its toll on me. And uh, I knew that at some point as I was struggling um, just emotionally as a father, uh, watching my son go through this painful experience, this hardship, um, I had to uh, get help and grow stronger for the road ahead. That's when I discovered adventure motorcycle riding. And um, I'd never known that world. I'm from the coast. You can see from the, from the <laughs> behind me. Um, I grew up and had my first boat at 13 and as, as on the intercoastal, intercoastal waterways as a kid. Yeah. And uh, so I knew nothing really of motorcycles. And right. um, ultimately caught our YouTube video, started watching uh, these, these, immersed myself in adventure motorcycle riding. It helped me to heal and grow stronger for the road ahead. And I started to ask, like, wh wh why is that? And why is it important? And what difference does it make, um, you know, in, in the world around us? And so uh, I put together these practices and this framework. And um, and I feel really passionate about uh, the outcomes that I think that these practices support and, uh, you know, change and positivity and trust and insight and energy and these are these are core things that I think a lot of people can uh, derive a lot of value from that are super relevant today. So I sat on a mission to kind of authentically share uh, my story and, and these valuable practices. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Where can people find your book? It's on Amazon. It's an Amazon bestseller. I'm excited to say it became a number one Amazon bestseller. And uh, you can find Always Adventure uh, on Amazon. 
That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, and you know, you mentioned positivity a couple of times in this conversation. I got to say positivity is key. I would never have gotten through so many of the things I went through in life if I didn't have a positive attitude. And that's what brought me through everything. It gave me just an unbelievable inner power to get me through all the ups and downs that I've experienced in life. You know, positivity is really powerful. You know, at the end of the day, the point of the book is to be uh, a story of hope, healing, and transformation. I hope that our listeners go to Amazon, order the book. Um, it's a quick read. Um, and, and I think, and I hope that it's entertaining. It's certainly my heart. Uh, it was very difficult for me to kind of uh, like, uh, be that kind of vulnerable to really share my heart and soul uh, in right. those pages. I'm proud of it. Um, and uh, so I, I hope that that's what people experience if they go uh, to Amazon and order the book and and certainly you can go to alwaysadventurelife.com and, yes. uh, and and learn a little bit more. And uh, we have these amazing, amazing roundtable experiences and, and uh, a couple other uh, offerings uh, for people. But uh, at the very least, uh, certainly I'd love for people to go check out the book. And what services do you provide? So people know like exactly the services that you, you provide for everybody. Primarily, it's these roundtable experiences. It's a one-year experience. Uh, the intention is to leverage the power of an intimate view, having a shared experience over the course of time. So we have you know, the fall semester. It's a year long experience, um, right? Six to eight people. Uh, there is a screening process. I'm looking for the right fit. Uh, we want to yeah. be able to trust uh, the, each other in that group, right? It's not about whether you can contribute. Uh, I believe that everybody in a round table uh, can, has a lot to offer. But can you also receive? And so we're really talking to, it's a good fit for people that are going through a change. They're in the yeah. middle of that, or they want to cause a change, right. right? So kind of the core of this conversation, I think a lot of people get to the a point in life where they're, they're want to make it or they, uh, a shift or they're finding those, themselves in, in one and they want uh, a good counsel that they can trust, good tribe of, of men, um, and so these roundtables are really effective, really move the needle, help you to feel connected. And, and there's a framework that we engage in along the way. Uh, so the roundtables are great. Fall semester is coming up. Uh, not a lot of opportunity there, but there is, uh, there is um, limited availability, availability there. And then uh, again, that's the Adventureman Roundtable offering. And then we have a, a business offering as well for kind of cohorts within yeah. business Oh, that's awesome. Now, if you had to take today's um, conversation and you wanted to give a couple of takeaways, you know, what are some of the things you'd like to emphasize? Em you know, embracing mm -hmm. right? and being willing to engage at yeah. the very least. Um, when we allow ourselves uh, to kind of be open, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's really the catalyst for all change. When we believe in a new possibility, uh, right. we're not sure maybe of what it's going to look like or how it's all going to work. Yeah. Uh, when we allow ourselves to engage, um, mm -hmm. that's where it all begins. Yes. And uh, I think that's the precipice for having the experience that we're really looking for and really connecting with things that are more meaningful to ourselves. I love that. I love that so much. This has been amazing, Andy. I, I love when you come on the show. You have such great insight and you just are a positive person. And you just, you know, you, you, I can feel the positive energy just when I talk to you, you know, and you're doing so much good in society. You know, you took your life experiences and you turned it into something really powerful, really good, you know, that could help others, you know, improve their lives. So I really am grateful, you know, that you're on our show, that you you become part of our community and that you are here to really help others and, and give them the knowledge they need so they can move forward in life. So thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. It's always a pleasure talking with you and uh, thanks for the platform and and always thanks for the conversation. It's always enjoyable and uh, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. And you have a great day. You too.